we, uh, we live in a palace of possibilities. Okay, that's a kind of a metaphor for it. It's another way of saying we have far more potential than we're using. Okay, now I didn't tell anybody here anything you didn't know. <laughs> all right, with that sentence, all right. Um, but the palace of possibilities is a delightful metaphor because see, the palace of possibilities represents all of our potential. It's filled with joyous rooms and rooms of abundance and success and achievement and everything else we want. It's filled with that all over the place. However, what we tend to do is stay in our own rooms. There are comfort zones, okay? Uh, those other rooms, well, you know, maybe we deserve to be in them. Maybe, you know, we should be there. Maybe, you know, we, we could belong there. But other people occupy those rooms. You know, richer people, more connected people, uh, luckier people, maybe. Uh, people with more talent than me or people that are smarter than me or whatever the reason may be, those other rooms, uh, they're for other people. I don't quite belong there. I'm in my room with my comfort zone, okay? And the interesting thing about my room with my comfort zone is it has walls on it, okay? And the walls have writing on them that I read every day. And these walls are filled with my cans and my can'ts and my shoulds and my shouldn'ts and my musts and my must nots and all my beliefs and all my attitudes and everything, all my experiences and everything that have come to be the truth for me are written on my walls and I see them all the time. And so, so if, if I'm going to do something new and step out of my room, I may read my walls and it says, oh, you, but you can't do that. That's for other people to do. Oh, yeah, yeah, but if you do that, you're going to feel uncomfortable. Or you don't have any experience for that, you know. Or, you know, your mother, your mother, you know, she's going to get on you if you do that. Um, and so on. You know, so we, these are very, very powerful writings on our walls. And we're going to talk about the writing on our walls all day long today, okay. What might be written on our walls? Well, or, or let me say it differently. Where does this writing come from? And we're going to need microphones for this some if I can, but, but uh, let, let me ask, who writes on your walls? Well, ultimately, I think we do, but we pick it up from a lot of different cultural parent. Parent? Culture. Do parents write on walls? Um, well, they tell us things and they yes. uh, splatter the paint. They splatter the paint. <laughs> okay, okay. Who writes on your walls? I, mean, I was going to say parents, or there's always teachers, or other kids, or friends. Yeah, I, I had uh, te teachers, yeah, yes, friends, teachers, correct. I, re I remember, I got to her back in like second or third grade or something, there was the teacher, I even forgot exactly what she said, but she's talking about economics, or like, like finance and money, and she was a third grade teacher teaching, you know, reading or something, okay. But she talked about it as though she knew what it was, and, and I don't remember the words anymore. All I can remember was big limits. Okay, only rich people do this. Only rich people, you know, can make money, uh, or greedy people can make money. Stuff like that. Okay, and I, rem I, I just, I, I just remember the feeling of it. The words don't come, but, but see, teachers t tell it. They write on our walls, positive and negative. Okay, who else writes on our walls? Uh, Deanne, who, who writes on your walls? Um, I think ma basically parents. You know, the old, they do a lot old, of the writing. Old writing. Yeah, they do a lot of writing. Go back here to, to Tom. Um, as kids, we wrote on our own walls based on how we saw the world according to our parents and those around us and what was safe and what wasn't. What was safe and what wasn't, yeah. Is another, way to, um, another way to say that is we have our own experiences. For, a very simple example is you're riding your bicycle and you go too fast, you fall down and you hurt yourself, okay? You just had an experience. Nobody wrote on your wall, but you said to yourself, I'm not riding my bicycle fast and falling down or I'm going to be more careful or something because you've got something written on your walls that says you do this and you get pain. Okay? And so a lot of our writing is very helpful for us. I mean, it's quite useful, isn't it? I have writing on my walls that say, don't kiss rattlesnakes. And, it, and it's quite helpful. It's quite helpful. Oftentimes, the writing on our walls that seem to have come from our parents, where did our parents get it? From their parents. And where did they get it? From the, their parents and so on. And a lot of times we get hand-me-down stuff that's been handed down and handed down and handed down and it lands on us as the truth and we walk around believing it and acting according to it, and nobody's questioned it in the meantime. It's just the way things are. Some of this is very laughable. We're going to get into some details here, but it's quite laughable, a lot of this, you know. <laughs> but anyway, um, 
Does the TV write on, on your wall? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We were talking the other day in one of our other workshops about what love is. Does TV tell you what love is? It portrays it all over the place, does it not? In a certain way. And so do books. Do they not? In movies? And that kind of thing? Yeah. My, uh, when I was around 10 years old, uh, my grandma, my grandmother on my mother's side, her name was Grandma Effie, is what we call her. Um, Stay with us for, I think, about a year. And my parents would go off to work, and I'd be home in the summertime, and I'd be with Grandma Effie. And so Grandma Effie would write on my walls, okay? And she was very sincere, very sincere. And one of the things she would say to me was, don't get too excited about anything, because you wouldn't want to be disappointed, okay? Interesting thing to put on a kid's walls, right? And so I would listen to that, and, and she didn't say it once. She said over, because this was, was this the truth to her, by the way? Absolutely. Was she trying to limit me with this? No, not at all. She was trying to help me because this is the truth according to her. Okay? So she's trying to take her little grandson, you know, and protect him from emotional pain. Don't get too excited about anything because you wouldn't want to be disappointed or, or you'll get disappointed. Okay? And I remember I used to live in, at the time I was living in Long Beach, California, which is near Los Angeles, which at the time they had a fun zone there called the Pike. It's what it was called, roller coaster and a bunch of rides. And, and for a 10-year-old, that was, wow, that's what you do. And, you know, once in a while we get to go to the Pike. And, but uh, we, my parents would say, we're going go, to go to the Pike this weekend, this Saturday. And I go, oh, wow, my gra what would Grandmother Effie, Effie say to me? Don't get too excited. You might get disappointed. And I thought for a minute, you know, I get all worked up about this. If I can't go, I'm not going to like it. So I bought into that for a while. Now, thank God, Grandma Effie was only around for about a year. Because, you see, we get, see, people are consistently writing on our walls. All over, every day, somebody, I'm writing on your walls right now. Okay, when I mean, you have conversations, you're writing on each other's walls because you're reflecting your own beliefs and attitudes and so on and so forth. And so all this gets added in to thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of things on your wall. And some just kind of sort of stand out, you see. Um, but fortunately, that was overridden or I wouldn't be here giving this, okay? I get very excited about this, and, and if it doesn't go well, I don't want to be disappointed, right? Yeah, I'm rocking my thumb, okay? <laughs> when, I was, when I was a kid, my, my parents used to say to me, I'd be sitting there eating dinner, and my dad in particular would say, clean your plate, Gary. The children in Asia are starving. Okay, so I'd clean my plate. Now, no, notice I never, I never questioned that, at least at the time. Oh, the children, the children in Asia are starving. I, well, I better, I better clean my plate. As though my, cleaning my plate really had something to do with that other problem. Okay? But that's what I would do. I am now 59 years old. Anybody have dinner with me last night? Did I clean my plate? <laughs> Don't always clean my plate. But often I will clean my plate even when I'm not hungry anymore, I will clean my plate. Isn't that, and I've never worked on that with an EFT or anything like that. I've never bothered. It's not a big deal to me. But I, just, I do notice it. I do notice it. I have this somehow this thing to clean my plate. And, it, and, and it's a nonsensical logic, if you will. But see, we don't always, we don't always act just by logic. Uh, we act by our emotions. How many of you, oh, back here, back here, we have another, another uh, comment, question. It's just a comment. I noticed that one of the big contributors to writing on our walls is religion. If your parents are active in church and you're sure. bombarded with, oh um, yeah, various yeah, and, and 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 with and without uh, you know making necessarily any religious comments, there's something called the mm -hmm. Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. which are a bunch of thou shalt's and so on. I'm not commenting on they're good or bad, but they are written on your walls. If mm -hmm. if in fact that's your religious upbringing, thou shalt this, thou shalt not that, and so on and so forth, you know. And so, whether those are true or not, they are true for you to the extent you buy, and they are part of your truth. Okay? Uh, in the Catholic religion, uh, as I understand it, if, if you get married, you're supposed to stay married. I mean, and if you don't, well, and that's part of your truth. Um, so, so, if you happen to be Catholic and you happen to want to get divorced or something, you have all this to deal with, because you have to deal with the writing on your walls about this truth. Uh, some, somebody else doesn't find that true at all. You know, which is interesting, because let me ask you, your version of the truth, is it exactly the same as mine? No. Is it exactly the same as the person sitting next to you? Or the person you're married to? Or lovers with? Is it the same as your kids? 
or your parents. No. You may reflect your parents, but you have other inputs beside that. How many of you grew up with the writing on your walls that went something like this? Children should be seen and not heard. Okay? Now, some of us just sort of let that one go. Okay? I, didn't, I heard that somewhere, but I didn't hear it very much. So I didn't. This child gets hurt a lot. <laughs> okay? But other people have that, and boy, let me tell you, it rings every time they, they, they need to get up in front of somebody or, or speak up about something or, or stand up for their own rights or whatever. They become the little child that should not be heard. I'm curious, as I'm talking about this, does anybody have writing on your walls that's coming up that you can share with us? Something that just comes, that shows up? Go ahead, right here. Wait, wait we, need, we need this. My mom, as I left the house, used to say, be careful, honey. <laughs> be careful. Honey. Be careful, honey. Yes, which, yes. Mean, wh yeah, <laughs> which means what to you? I'm not sure. It doesn't mean much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it used to mean, I think it ingrained a lot of fear, you know, about being in the world and having experiences. And yes. Something bad might happen to me or something dangerous is, is just waiting for me. Yes. And quite often something can get said and we can, as we talked about earlier, misinterpret. I want to do something mm -hmm. if I can. Sure. Uh, uh, your first name is? Rose. Rose, Rose or Rose Marie? Rose. Rose. Everybody okay. calls Rose. Rose. Okay, Rose. Listen, I think you are so gorgeous that you could walk out of the centerfold uh, of a Playboy magazine. I absolutely <laughs> believe that. Okay? Well, thank you. Now, what I want to point out to you is that what is not important is what I said. That is not important at all is what you said in, re in your self-talk to me. She <laughs> said any one of a number of things. Well, you're right. <laughs> Okay? You could have said that. You could have said, well, yeah, but you don't know about the thing under, but, you know, okay? Or whatever. Or you could say, or, or, or whatever. I mean, you, you would evaluate what I said, and what was important was not what I said to you, it's what you said to you, and that's what's written on your walls. Yes. It's your interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. See, I can write on your walls and use the words. It's your interpretation of those words that mm -hmm. are going to count. Okay? Um, Quite often, though, if, if we, somebody said something, our interpretation is pretty clear for both people. Then. Anyway, who, who else has something that's written on your walls? I'm, I'm curious. Back here to Jojo. Um, what came up for me when you said children should be seen and not heard, it's women should be seen and not heard. Oh, that's a little limit, isn't it? Big one. Yeah. Big one. Yeah. 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 There's another one called something like, like the glass ceiling. Which, you know, for, for business purposes, for when there's this glass ceiling. And, and while there certainly seems to be evidence of it, there are some people who ignore it totally. <laughs> they well, don't know anything about a glass ceiling. And they, women, they go right through it. Well, when I, when I was growing up as women my age in this room, uh, you could either be a t teacher or a nurse or a mother. I mean, you didn't it. have any other occupation. Sure. So when you went to college, it's like, why do you want to go to college? Well, you know, you're going to either be a teacher or a nurse. Yeah. And that, is, that, that attitude it. is tending to change nowadays. Youngsters growing up nowadays aren't really getting no, that, but the aren't. point is you got that, and that's on your walls in some place. Right. And you can logically look at it and say, no, no, no. But emotionally, we respond differently, okay? Who else, uh, you had something here, Holly, right? Yeah, one thing I got a lot was, um, don't talk back. If I was going to, you know, they were, maybe somebody was punishing me or something, I couldn't defend myself. And I realized a couple of years ago how, in that we're being taught not to be able to say no and not to be able to protect ourselves and how powerful that has been for me too. Yeah, yeah, and, and, but I want to ask you, uh, when somebody says don't talk back, what's your interpretation? That means what to you? Don't talk back, like I'm not worth talking back or what does that mean? Um, I, 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 what first comes up is I'm in trouble if I talk back. So trouble. That's, there's like a maybe lot of emotion a, coming. Maybe in. a spanking or, or a, a verbal abuse or something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's consequences. There are definite about. consequences. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. so, 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 see, but, but let me point out somebody can have that written on their walls, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean that every time it literally takes place, like, like if you and I are having a conversation and you disagree, mm -hmm. that, that you, it doesn't mean you'll never disagree or take another side to it. Mm -hmm. But if the argument gets heated, somehow or other, and I said, well, are you talking back to me? <laughs> mm -hmm. Chances are, you know, your turtle head's going to go back in your shell. Mm -hmm. uh, it may or may not, but, but you're going to have that tendency. That's the point. Right. Okay. None of these things are absolutely exact, but right, right here if we can. Go ahead. I had a really supportive mother, and uh -huh. she would say to me, you are an amazing person, and mm -hmm. you're going to do something great with your life. And she yes. said that to me when I was very small. Yes, and you, your mother and my mother should meet. Mm -hmm. I, put, I put out on our email, 
our website a whole series called The Palace of Possibilities. We're taking that, that written series and bringing it to life here. But one of my sections was the world's greatest psychotherapist, which is my mother, okay? Because she was constantly, constantly amazed at everything that I did. She grew up in a very impoverished circumstance. Um, her mother was schizophrenic. That's my grandma, Effie. Yeah. Um, and, and always told the kids she didn't want them. And she didn't. She, she was a single mother. The husband split. She scrubbed floors, et cetera. And so, you know, my mom really grew up with a very low self-image. And anything that a child of hers did that was even remotely meritorious was astonishing. <laughs> I, I grew up as Wonder Boy. Oh, wow. I, I'm uh, honest to God. I grew up as Wonder Boy. I remember one time... <laughs> I remember one time I came home from about third grade and my mother said, what'd you do today? And I said, we had a spelling bee. Oh, okay. How'd you do? I said, well, I got third place. <gasps> <laughs> well, you know, third place is pretty good, but it, it's not Harvard stuff, all right? Uh, she calls her friends and for the next couple of months, you know, as I'm around the house, people come over and say, good speller right here, huh? <laughs> Spell garage for me. <laughs> so I go, G-A-R-A-G-E. God, that's good. That's good. But, but we're laughing about that. But that is very serious. That's written on my walls big time. I, I grew up in anything that, that didn't work out well for me. And you know, I live in this world too and things don't work out. You know, it's a real world out here. But it wasn't, oh my God, I failed or anything like that. It was, oh, I stubbed my toe. Because when you, when you launch off of being Wonder Boy or anything like that, that's how the world looks to you. And I did not understand for years how people had problems. I didn't understand that. I really did not. It's a gift. It's an absolute gift to have what you had and what I had, okay? Not everybody has that right. I have some other writing on my walls which is limiting, okay? And I had to deal with it. But my mother was such a foundational thing. Amazing writing, writing on my walls. Who, what else is written on? Who else has something written on your walls? Back here. Little girls are made of sugar and spice. <laughs> oh, little girls are made of sugar and spice. Which means what? I guess I wasn't a little girl because I was a tomboy. You were a tomboy. And they wanted me to be daddy's little girl and I never could be. Oh, and therefore you didn't match up? No, I didn't. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now that would be an interesting little writing on your wall, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't quite match up in some fashion because of that writing. Right. Okay, yeah, back here to Shamiram. Shamiram? Shamiram. Shamiram. But this is true. My father had made a big and a frame. No yelling, no beating, no cursing always joy in the house and everything <laughs> or else <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he would really like show us every day it was written and framed by the door on the, the wall. walls on literally the, on the wall literally on the wall yeah. really framed and everything written yes marvelous that uh, uh, here to, here to Nate if we could I right hear I learned no pain no gain no pain no gain and what does that mean it's not worth anything unless you suffer a bit. Yes, of course. And a, a corollary to that is if you're going to do anything worthwhile in this world, you've got to use willpower. Suffer. You've got to clench your teeth and grit your, uh, your, clench your fist and grit your teeth and do what must be done, right? And work long hours and suffer in your terms That's in order, if, otherwise you're not going to be able to make it. Okay? That's a real limit, especially in the business world. Good. Yeah, good. Thank you. Back here. I just wanted to say about the no pain, no gain, this EFT, that's where I have a, it goes against that. Like, if it's not hard, you yes. don't suffer, yeah. it, it can't be valuable. Yeah, EFT will do that, yes. Yeah, yeah. In order for us to really do this well, we've got to take weeks and months and, 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 and analyze it and blah, 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 blah. We can't just sit there and go tap and all of a sudden I have a cognition change and it wasn't a big deal. Uh, it, it has to happen. Uh, forever. I mean, it has, and there has to be pain and tears and all that. Well, we have a little pain and tears once in a while, but they're, but they're relatively modest and brief. But yeah, thank you. Who else has something on your wall? Right here, to Kathy. Well, my mom always promised that if I climbed up in trees, I would fall out and break my arm. Oh, she promised you that. She did. And I, I always thought that as a kid that was cool. Uh -huh. So I would climb the trees and I never <laughs> fell out and broke my arm. Oh, poor Kathy. <laughs> Well, but, but does that mean you were a failure at climbing trees? Well, I, I'm question, not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. Yeah, I was okay. always disappointed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. However you take that on, see, it's your yeah. interpretation of these things, too. Uh, there was somebody right here. Right here's another one from Holly. It's Holly, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. 
I just thought of a whole other aspect that my parents tended not to communicate verbally very much. Sure. So there's a lot of writing on my walls that comes from what I observed from them. Of course. Or the kinds of things that happened yes. to them and then the assumptions and the interpretations that I made and then I wrote those on my walls. Yeah, of course, of course. It, one could say, and this is semantics, they wrote it on your walls by their behavior or lack of behavior or something. You wrote it on your wall, whatever. It gets written on your walls. And I tend to say people write on your walls or things write on your walls. But in, but in fact, we will write there ourselves. <laughs>